Thanks for checking out this no spoilers movie review for the film Overlord. This was a 2018 release, so not very long ago it was in theaters. And it did, eh, in theaters, it made a little bit more than its money back. Uh, I think the, the budget, I, when I looked it up, was about $38 million, and I think they made about 42, so they made about $4 million. Typically, that's not what uh, theaters want. They want to make many, many more million dollars, so this film, I don't know, may have been considered a mild success or may have been considered kind of a flop based on whatever the theater or the uh, production company was looking for money-wise in return. So, um, like I said, it's a 2018. If you saw the trailer, like, there are some things I'm going to say that are kind of spoilery if you've not seen the trailer. But if you've seen the trailer, not a spoiler. So I'm just going to talk about those things because I'm, I'm assuming most people when they went to see this film or if they're going to see this film, like they would have an idea of what it is. And basically it's a mashup of genres. It is a um, like a war action movie mixed with a horror film. And it kind of touches on something that I've seen touched on films touch on in films before that go the same route it's world war ii and it's like nazi occult type stuff rolled into it which i like the concept it's interesting and it is rooted in actual history because hitler and the nazis were into looking into like all this crazy occult stuff trying to figure out if they could uh use magic and other relics and and uh science to create crazy advantages and and undead and demons and it, it's it was some wacky stuff but um but yeah it's it, it's been done a few times before and i've seen some other films with it i actually wrote it down actually i've seen all the other films that i found listed that have done this type of thing before uh blood creek the devil's rock and uh frankenstein's army so and so for me going into this film it's not something totally new but for someone who has not seen those three movies before, you might go into it thinking, wow, this is really fresh, this is really new, this is really interesting. So my kind of take on it might be a lot different than another person's take who hasn't seen those other films. So just kind of keep that in mind while I'm talking about it. Um, I'm just going to go through my notes here as I put down while I was watching. Uh, I thought it was really gritty and really intense in the beginning for being like a war film. I, I think they did a really good job of kind of showing the intensity and the horrors and the violence of war. Uh, but then it gets to a point where it really starts to slow down. Uh, it's very intense and kind of fast in the beginning. Then it slows down a lot. A lot. Of, I mean, it, it makes sense in a, in a sense because of character development. They have to do that. But I also feel like they spent too much time trying to do character development, and they may have had too many characters they tried to uh, get into. Um uh, it just felt like a lot of the scenes were actually very stretched, very long, and the movie actually got kind of boring, to be honest. And with a film like this, where it's a mashup of horror and it's a mashup of war, it should be a very fast-moving film. You know, you can have some scenes here and there that, that kind of drag because you need exposition and you need to develop uh, characters, but I felt like overall it, the runtime was too long for what the story was, and they had way too many scenes that just took too long, and it ended up becoming a boring film. It lost my attention a lot of the times. I mean, I fully paid attention for doing the review, but it was if I was just watching this for a, a good time, I probably would have just done something else while, while I had it on in the background. It would have been one of those films for me. Um, one of the weird things, this is a really small thing, but there, I noticed small things with films. Um, the, they had subtitles because the French was being spoken and German was being spoken at times. So the subtitle font that they had looked terrible. It looked like it was typed from like an Apple IIe. It was like DOS, uh, like text, like super pixelated letters. And I was just like, that's a really weird choice because... I've, I've not, well, honestly, I've not seen that in modern days. I haven't seen anyone use subtit subtitled font like that in, like, a decade or more. It's been a long time. It was just a really weird choice, and I just didn't get it. And it kind of bothered me. Obviously, it's a very little thing, but it kind of bothered me. I was just like, why didn't you have, like, a smooth font? Because it's 2019. I don't get it. Um I did like the behind the enemy lines kind of creeping tension that just kind of goes with what I was talking about before with the whole war intensity and the, the grittiness and everything like that. Like 
in the beginning, the first maybe 20 minutes or so, you are kind of like on the edge of your seat, kind of like what is going to happen. And then they do something really cool where they set up um, like a little inkling that there's something off. The You know, in addition to this being a war and being behind enemy lines, it's there's something else going on here. And it's a very little thing that they kind of put in there and you're just like, mm, there's something else going on, there's something off. Which I like that, kind of like plant that little, that little like few seconds of film that makes people say, okay, this is just not straightforward what we're what we're doing initially. There's going to be something else going on here. So I like that about it. Um, I wrote down the movie's pretty slow. It, it gets pretty slow. And in my opinion, like I was saying, for these two genres mixed together, that's not excusable. It's, it's definitely not. Um, I like how you get a little taste. Okay, no, that was what I was saying. A little taste of something off. Uh, duh, 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 duh. I already mentioned those films. I do like how it's two films rolled into one in, in essence. And you can kind of look at it like the first, you know, mm, 30 minutes, 45 minutes or something like it, it, for the most part, it just feels like it's a war film and it does well as a war film. And then it starts rolling in all the horror stuff and it is more of a horror film after that. So I like those kind of meshings. I think it's done better in something like a From Dust Till Dawn by Quentin Tarantino, where it's like a um, like a heist film up front and guys running away from the law, and then it turns into something totally different. I don't want to spoil it if people haven't seen it, but it is not a new film. If you haven't seen it, just watch it. Um, uh, so there is an interesting point that kind of comes up in this film where it's kind of the dilemma of... Do we just follow the mission and follow orders and take care of what we're supposed to take care of? Or when you're in a situation and you realize there's something terrible going on that you can do something about, do you take care of that instead or do you try and do both things? Because there is kind of this um, this issue where they're just kind of like, yeah, but this is the mission and it's kind of like just do the mission. But then they're like, ah, but our conscience is, conscience is kind of like, uh, there's something else going on here that we could do something about. What should we do? So I like that kind of dilemma in the film. Uh, it has some cool horror imagery. Uh, there's some good gore to it. There's some good CGI mixed with practical effects that looks nice. But I will say they could have gone a lot further, especially with a $38 million budget. They could have gone a lot further further with the gore, further with the um, practical effects designs. Uh, I've seen it in, in films that have way, way, way lower budgets, uh, have done a much better job with it. I just felt like we should have seen more creativity with that type of stuff in this film, especially with the budget and the fact that it was a theatrical release. We should have seen more creativity there. We definitely should have. Uh, although I will say that the des the set designs, when it's supposed to be a horror-related portions of the film, are really good. They're very well detailed. They feel... Uh, very horror-esque, and they set a very nice scene for terrible things, basically. Um, and there's a lot of, like, cool details in the background. If they only would have taken that same type of approach to design and execution of it and put that into the other, the practical effects slash CGI effects, this film would have been a lot better, in my opinion. Um, I like the main character, I, I do, and there's some other characters in it that are likable as well. Uh, I felt like they did a really good job of making the main character very sympathetic, so that was a really good achievement. I always like that. You know, making a film, you definitely want people to sympathize and feel for the main character because then people get way more invested in what's going on and, and can immerse themselves more. Okay, so the last thing I have written down is... If you're doing a movie like this, you need to commit more to the horror aspect of it. They did not have enough horror in it. I felt like they focused way more on the actual war portion of it, and then they put a little bit of the horror into it. Um, but I felt like they needed to commit way, way more to the horror. Because in my opinion, for a film like this, you're not really going to be able to court the audience members who are horror film fans. You are mainly just going to be bringing in people who are horror fans. So the the war portion of people probably aren't going to see the trailer and be like, oh, I want to go see that, because they know there's a horror element to it that makes it much different. So because of that, you need to speak to who your audience is actually going to be. So commit way, way, way more to a horror film. Um, I feel like otherwise it doesn't really work that well, this type of genre mashing, in my opinion. 
So um, overall, out of five stars, I got to give this three, three out of five stars. It's not a bad film. It's well executed. But for me, it's nothing new. Uh, it left a lot to be desired. They could have got way more creative. The script could have been a lot better. They could have cut it down more. They could have kept it moving a lot more. There were some really good things, but I just... All in all, it was just an eh movie, in my opinion, and I would definitely not watch it again. I don't think I would even recommend it to anyone, really. But there might be people out there who really loved it. In fact, I do know some people who really loved it, and that's fine. And like I said, like if you haven't seen you know, uh, Blood Creek or Frankenstein's Army or um, The Devil's Rock, then you may have seen this and been like, wow, blown away. I've never seen someone do that before. So uh, that's valid. I understand that. But uh, I, that said, I will say that I was looking for the budget on what Frankenstein's Army was, and I couldn't find one, but everywhere it just said it was like a no-budget film. And so I was like, I mean, it's got to be like under a million dollars pretty much. So the fact that that was such a low-budget film, and I thought it was done way better, and the practical effects were way better in my opinion for creativity-wise, it really came across well. Um, I just feel like Frankenstein's Army is a way better movie for this type of, you know, two genres put together. And I would just recommend that. If you did like Overlord, watch Frankenstein's Army and um, give that a go because I think you'll really like that. The other things that's strong about Frankenstein's Army in comparison to Overlord is it's it's got a found footage approach to it, which I think works really, really well for how they shot things and how they put the story together and how... The audience feels as it progresses. It adds a lot to it. So that's my recommendation. I think Frankenstein's Army costs a lot less and was way better, in my opinion. But like I said, three stars. Anyway, uh, what did you think? Did you see Overlord? Do you want to see it? Put some comments down there. We'll talk about it. Give me a thumbs up if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine. But please take that one second to hit the subscribe button because it can mean a lot for my channel. And it's so painless for you. It's literally like a second please do it and spread the word if you like the channel. But anyway, thanks so much for checking this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.